Happy Tuesday. Hello, everybody. We're going to give this one more second to get going, and then we will really, truly, fully start our broadcast. Happy Tuesday. Welcome back to Bravo Music Academy. I'm Miss Christy. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you taking the time, and I'm just realizing that everything has changed. Wow. Which way am I going? How am I doing this? What? Ah, okay, we got it. Hi, how are you? Thank you for joining me. I'm Miss Christy. This is Bravo Music Academy, and this is Teacher Tip Tuesday. And I am super excited to be here with you today. We are in the middle of a series within a series. So we have been doing a how-to series since, I think since September. We started it um, as, as a way to kind of help everybody get themselves going in the fall, and it's just kind of continued. And last week we started our how to uh, do holiday season practice, because the holiday season is in full swing, and we are all just kind of trying to do our thing and get through. So today is the second installment of how to practice during the holiday season, and uh, Last week we talked about finding the time to practice. This week we are talking about how to practice when you are away. So if you are joining me live, please say hello. I would love to chat with you. If you are catching up on the replay at some time, then also say hello. I always come back and try to chat with anybody who has joined us later. So let's dive right in. Practicing while you're away. Now, most of us have not done very much travel over the course of the year. It's been a very different year. We'll put it that way. It's been different and or interesting or unique. However you want to call it, it's been a 2020, right? So most of us have not done much travel, but I do know several people who are doing small family pod gatherings. So they're quarantining before and after Christmas and Hanukkah, and that way they can spend time with their family and everybody can be safe. So with those people in mind, I came up with three tips for you to practice while you are away from your instrument. Because even though not all of us play an instrument like that big monster back there, I shouldn't call it a monster, it's a beautiful instrument, but I can't take it with me. So if I go somewhere, it stays here. My piano at home, it stays at home. It doesn't go with me anywhere, ever. But not everybody's instrument is like that. If you play the ukulele or the guitar, or if you're a singer, or pretty much any other instrument, <laughs> you can take it with you. But that doesn't always mean that it's convenient to, or that you have the space to. So I'm going to give you three tips today for practicing when you are not able to bring your instrument with you or for any reason. Ready to dive in? Here we go. Number one is to ask your teacher for off the bench activities. Now we call them off the bench activities here because our the instrument that we have the most students for is piano and we sit on a piano bench. If you do not sit on a piano bench for your, your lessons or to play your instrument, then you can call it off the chair. All right, but these activities are simply something that will keep you involved in the music that you are creating and learning, but off the bench, so away from your instrument. Now, I can't tell you what your teacher would recommend. I know what I would recommend for my students, and the last two tips are going to help you a little bit with that, but it really depends on your instrument, your age, and your level. So ask your teacher what's something that you can do to practice if you don't have your instrument with you. They might tell you what my tip number two is. Tip number two is work on your rhythm. What's rhythm? Notes and rests. We've talked about them before. Uh, my favorite way to have my students work on rhythm is using rhythm cups. And if 
any of you are familiar with Wendy Stevens over at ComposeCreate.com, if I have any teacher friends who are joining me, um, let me know because that is my absolute favorite way to have my students work on rhythm. All you need is the music and a cup. And I have a stack of cups here that I use in lessons. I sanitize them in between. Don't worry. They're all good and clean. Um, you just, you can tap it anywhere. That's the awesome thing about cups. So tap it on the table, tap your hand on it. You can tap it on your head. You can tap it on your lap. Don't tap it on your neighbor. They might not like it all that much. I mean, they might, you never know, but I would suggest not. Um, that's my favorite way to work on rhythm. Other ways you can work on rhythm is clapping or tapping. You know, if you're a pianist, you have two hands. So tap separate rhythms with both hands. Nice and easy, right? That's number two is uh, work on rhythm. Number three, this is, um, this is, I think it's a really fun way. I call it air practice. You've heard of air guitar, right? Air guitar is just pretending you're playing the guitar. But air practice, that is intentional. You are going to be playing your instrument on a different surface. So for me as a pianist, I'm actually gonna move this down a bit so that hopefully you can see my tabletop, which you cannot. Okay, let's try this. We're gonna take you off your little pedestal here. Okay, so you can kind of see my tabletop. I'll come down so you can see my face too. There we go. So I'm on my tabletop here and I'm going to practice, let's see, I'm gonna practice a Bach minuet on my table here. Ready? We're gonna go. And I messed up my fingering. I already know I did that. So what I did there, did you notice that? I played, I actually played my piece on the table. I did all of my fingerings, I did movement. So if I have a cross, I cross my finger over and actually move my hand and keep that thumb in the same spot. If I have to change an octave, I actually move my hand up or down. That is the difference between air guitar and air practice. Air guitar is noodling and pretending and rock star stuff, right? Air practice is productive. I mean, you can still be a rock star in air practice, let's be honest. Air practice, super productive. Focus, bring your music with you. Focus on what you're doing. It's actually something that I started doing in college as part of my regular practice routine. I would sit and I would practice my pieces in between my classes on my desk. And it just really gives you a different kind of focus on what you're doing. The added benefit too is you have to hear what it is that you're playing in your head because you don't have the feedback from your instrument. Now, you can do this with wind instruments and string instruments as well. It works just as easily. You're just going to have your proper hand position. Is it left hand? I never remember with trombone which hand goes to the mouth. If you know the trombone, please tell me which hand goes to your mouth and which hand works the slide. I think the right hand works the slide. Let me know. Um, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> I got a little sidetracked there, sorry. It doesn't matter what your instrument is. You can air practice on any instrument. Now, if you are a vocalist, you have the ultimate advantage in this because you can sing anywhere. You can practice anywhere. And you guys are awesome for that. All right, I have one bonus tip for you. It kind of ties into um, the last two tips, and it is using the first two steps of my practice steps that I use with beginner students. I did a teacher tip Tuesday on that, oh, months and months ago. The practice steps, number one and number two, are point and read and tap and read. So you would grab your piece of music and you would just sit down there and you'd point to the notes and read the names out loud. So say you're doing Jingle Bells. I'm gonna use that as an example because everybody knows Jingle Bells, right? 
you point to the first notes. E, 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 T, because it's a half note, always count. E, 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 T, E, G, C, D, E, T, three, four. You can sing along or you can just say it. Step number two is tap and read. So you kind of take that air practice that we did in tip number three and you combine it with reading the notes out loud and just tap it. You can tap it with individual fingers and do it as air practice as you're uh, reading the notes out loud or you can just do it as tapping the rhythm in individual hands. Whatever works for you, whatever works for your instrument, that is what you can do. So that's it. Three, three tips plus a little bonus for practicing while you're away. Let's, uh, let's recap those really, really quickly. All right. Tip number one is to ask your teacher for activities that you can do that do not involve your instrument. We call them off the bench activities here, but other people call them other things. Ask your teacher. I'm sure they would love to give you something to work on for that. Number two is to work on only your rhythms. So clapping, cat, tapping, counting, all that good stuff. If you have a smartphone, you can totally get your metronome going and just practice keeping a steady beat. That is an important skill. I'll tell you that right there. Number three is to air practice. So know what your song is and do those fingerings and play those notes on a flat surface or if you're a, an instrumentalist who is not a keyboard player, pretend you're holding your instrument and play it in the air and actually work on your embouchure maybe. Work on your fingering if you are a strings player, violin, cello, guitar, ukulele, any of those. And the last bonus tip for the day is to do practice steps number one and number two. Those two practice steps are to point and read. So you're practicing your reading skills, your note reading. Um, you're also going to be counting while you're doing that. So you're also practicing rhythm. Number two is tap and read. So you're getting all of it the tapping, the note reading, the counting, everything. The only thing that's missing is the sound from your instrument. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, please consider liking it and sharing it with some friends. If it was not, send me a message. Let me know. What would you like to hear me talk about um, in future episodes? So, that's all I have for you today. I have to go run and teach another Zoom lesson. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I hope you have a musical week, and I will catch you next time. Bye.